Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a Resident Evil clone in Unity, and welcome to episode 12. In this tutorial, we're going to bring in a zombie, but we're not just going to bring him in from the asset store, we're going to kind of customise him a little bit as well. And don't forget, click on that subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series, and indeed, everything else about game development on my channel. And if you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check out my Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll get things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So you'll probably have already noticed the thumbnail for this video is, uh, I think it's got four uh, different enemy types on it. So we're going to bring in one of those enemy types to start us off with. And it's going to be the zombie. And we're going to have him in this section over here. And what we're going to basically aim to do in the next couple of tutorials is to start looking at some AI. Some simplistic AI to start us off with. But we'll be able to advance it as we go further and further into the series. So where do we get a zombie from? Well, a couple of different options. You could create your own in a 3D modeling software such as Maya or Blender. Some 3D modeling software uh, apps are paid for, such as Maya, but Blender is free. If you don't know how to use them, you could always use the Asset Store. We're going to go with something a little different. And you probably already noticed down the bottom here, I have in Chrome something called Mixamo. Mixamo is a great place for you to get some models to uh, work nicely in your game. So if we go to Mixamo.com, you'll need to create uh, an account. It's free. Don't worry about paying. Everything is uh, free on this channel, as we have said multiple times. And I'm just get rid of this down there. I hate it when you get little messages like that. So how do we use Mixamo? Once you're signed in, we need to find a model we're going to use. And I want to bring in the zombie that we have that looks like a police officer. Now, we can either use this one here. So if you, if you get this error message, you just need to click on use this character. So we can either use this one, which I believe is in the thumbnail. And if we give it a moment, it will skin itself. There we go. Or there is another one further down. But, you know, feel free to just kind of scroll down, have a look through and see what you can find. But when you select a new character, unless you tick this box here, it will prompt you that you're basically changing the character. So I'm going to click on use this character. There we go. So this is going to be the zombie that we bring in. His name is actually Derek. Now, he's just in the standard T-pose, but we need to have a couple of animations here. So the great thing about Mixmo is that we're not restricted to just importing the model itself. We can import an animation with it, and there are a lot of different animations and really handy animations to use. Now you can either click animations at the top or it's got a little find animations button here. So if we click that find animations button, it takes us to this. And you can see all these different animations that you can use. And there are a lot of animations. There are hundreds of animations that you can choose from. Now we're going to have a zombie here. So we need to pick animations that are relevant. But we also need to pick uh, animations which are going to be standard. For example, idle. So let's start by looking for idle. So let's go to the search box and type idle. Hit return. And we can select any one of these. So, you, I mean, for example, you can pick this one here. And it will show you what your model will look like in this animation. Perfect. So you can zoom in. Zoom out if you need to. You can pan around him if you need to. It's all good. So let's pick a standard animation. So let's take this one here. So that's just a zombie stood there. And again, you can pick any animation you want. You don't, you don't have to pick the same one as me. Now, there are a couple of steps to getting this model and this animation into Unity. And it is a little bit fiddly just because of the way Unity and uh, the character models work. If you've used Blender, you'll probably know what I mean when I say the textures. If not, let's do this now. So what we need to do is click on download at the top and you'll be presented with a couple of different options. The first one, format, we need to change that from FBX. We don't use FBX for Unity just yet. We need to use Collada. So select that option and make sure with skin is enabled. Frames per second, 30, that's fine. 
You can change it to 60 or 24 if you want. I'll keep it as 30 because it's not going to make too much of a difference right now. And a keyframe reduction, none. So what you need to do is click on download. It will take just a moment, but what it will do is it will download a Collada file as well as the textures separately. And that is what we want from this download file. We want those textures. Now, as it's doing this, I'm going to go to this folder here and I'm going to go into zombie because I've already gone ahead and downloaded everything we need simply because it just makes things quicker and easier in the long run. Because as you can see, just preparing this is taking longer than I would actually like, which is not very handy at all. But either way, uh, I'll explain what you do with this when it downloads. When it is fully downloaded, oh, it's starting, it's starting. So when it's fully downloaded into the zip file, all you need to do is open that zip file and you can't import this directly into Unity. What I would recommend you do is create a new folder like I have done here. I've called it zombie. And inside that zip file, this is it here, you just need to drag and drop this textures folder and only the textures folder into your new folder. So you can see there, I've already gone ahead and dragged textures. So once you have that textures folder in a separate folder, the next thing you need to do is click on download again and then change the format to FBX for Unity. So click that, make sure it is with skin once again and click on download. Although I guess it doesn't really matter if you have it with skin or not. Um, you've got the textures, so it doesn't really matter too much. Now you'll notice uh, the download itself is named as the character name at and then the animation name. And it doesn't really matter what it's called, to be honest. But all you would need to do is drag and drop this FBX into the same folder as the textures. And as I said, you can already see I have four different animations here. So when I bring this model in, I'm going to have these four animations. So let's say we've got that animation. That's good. That's fantastic. Now let's have a walking animation. So let's search for walking and then let's, well, you can choose any animation, I guess. Let's have our zombie walking like that. So there is a little something that we have to make sure we do correctly when dealing with these animations. We have to tick is, or rather in place, not is place, in place. Now, the reason we do that is because we are going to use our own AI system for this. We're going to use something called NavMesh, and we don't need the model to um, move itself because we're going to control its own movement. So any animation where it moves within this section here, you need to make sure you tick it in place. Uh, and that goes for pretty much any, any at all. So tick in place because we can control how he moves. So once you've got that, just click on download again. Uh, make sure you do have FBX for Unity and skin. It doesn't really matter whether you have with skin or without skin at this point. However, if you click on without skin, you would theoretically save space because let me click download. And we should be able to see down here that it is considerably less than the original one. So I don't know whether you saw there, but it was 100, I think it was 100 and something kilobytes as opposed to 20 something megabytes from the other one. So let's try a different animation. Let's put death maybe, and let's go with, I don't know, that one maybe for now. You just find the right one. In fact, we'll go with zombie death because that one would make more sense. There we go. So once again, download and FX for Unity and download again. And it'll queue it up, prepare it, download it. And just make sure all these files are in the same folder as the textures. So we can add more animations later on, but the four animations I want to deal with right now is dying, walking, zombie attack, and zombie idle. And you should be able to search for these exact same animations on Mixmo. They do exist in here. It's where I've got them all from originally. So if I, for example, say zombie attack, zombie attack, we should be able to choose one of these. So let's say, I think it might be this one. There we go. So there's our zombie attack. 
So what I will say is make sure you have at least four animations. One for dying, one for walking, one for attacking, and one for idle. Make sure you have those four. Once you have that complete folder with all the models, animations, and textures, you can bring that into Unity. So within Unity, let's create a new folder. So right click, create, folder, and let's just call this enemies. So any enemies that we create, whether it be from the asset store, whether it be uh, from Mixamo, they will go in here. So this one is just simply called zombie. So let's bring it into there and it'll import it into Unity. Perfect. Well, it will be perfect when it's finally imported. So what we're going to do now is, oh, if you get this error, it's just about normal map. Uh, obviously, we know what normal maps are. It's just saying that it needs to be set as a normal map rather than an actual texture. Just click on fix now and it will sort any errors out. So what we're going to do is we're going to customize this zombie a little bit more now. We've already customized what animations he can use. So let's customize how he looks. So I'm going to place him just here for now. So in our folder, I'm going to take uh, the idle one, I guess, maybe, which is this one, I think. So I'm going to drag and drop into Unity. And we just need to increase his size a little bit because he's a bit small. Uh, also rotate him this way a bit, I guess. So let's have minus 90. Scale, 3 by 3. In fact, that's still too small. 4 by 4 by 4, maybe. And just for scale sense, I am going to press play and have our character walk up to this model just to see what happens. Now, it must be noted that when we do this, we're not going to see anything change with the zombie itself. So in a scale sense, looks okay. Maybe could do with shrinking just a little bit. So maybe 3.9, 3.9, 3.9. So everything is kept to scale. Now, what we'll do is we will customize how we look. So we'll give him a really gruesome, gritty look. I mean, it already looks kind of gruesome and gritty, but I just want to show you how you can advance this further than what the model currently is. So first things first, let's uh, let's actually arrange this a bit better in our hierarchy. Let's create the enemies down the bottom. So let's take this character section here, hold control, press D, uh, just as a little marker. And let's have this as enemies. And let's bring Derek, zombie attack, whatever, down here, down to the bottom. And I'm going to rename him to zombie001. And let's play around with how he looks. So if we go to the model itself, and if we go to mesh, and further down in mesh, we have base and we have mesh one. So you'll notice both of these, if we select them, you'll see highlighted orange where they actually are. So the base is the head, the mesh is the rest of the body. Now you'll notice over here that we can't change the actual material. Now, the reason for that is simply because the material is locked inside the uh, prefab, as it were. So what I'm going to start with just for now is right click and unpack prefab. We're going to need to do this uh, because we need to add things to the prefab anyway at a later point. Uh, but what we can do just for, for a bit of fun, let's use the search bar and find face police zombie mat. So face underscore police and then zombie i am not protected in four areas thank you avast thank you very much i hate that popping up all the time thing is you do you click it and it says it just pops up again anyway um so yeah there we are face police zombie now if we click them you'll see each one is inside the uh, prefab itself so it doesn't really matter which one we use at this point and this is where it's great to, for example, let's say this one. And we can actually take these two materials and extract them and modify them. Even though they're locked inside the prefab right now, the FBX, they can actually be taken out. So if we hold control and select both of these and then press D, we can effectively duplicate them outside of there. So now we're free to modify these 
and apply them as necessary. So this one, let's drag onto base, which is the face. And this one, let's drag onto mesh, which is the rest of the body. Now we are free to modify these. So let's change this. Let's change the normal map on the face. Let's increase it. Yeah, he looks pretty nasty and grim. Uh, let's change the source to albedo alpha. That looks okay. Maybe, oh gosh, if we increase the metallic, he looks really grim. Uh, reduce the smoothness maybe a little bit. And yeah, okay, I'll stick with that. And let's try the mesh. Let's see what happens if we apply the same logic to the mesh. Let's see how he looks there. Um, so let's have normal map set as five. Maybe that's maybe a bit much. Let me set it as four and change it to albedo alpha and increase the smoothness. And how does he look? Yeah, he looks pretty gruesome. Yep, I think he'll do. So the last thing I want to do is I want to give him that idle animation now. Um, basically because we're going to start with the uh, AI kind of stuff from next tutorial. So what I'm going to do is this animation, we're going to do the same thing we did with the materials. Hold control, press D, and it will take it out. And let's make sure we tick loop time. It's important to tick loop time because we want the animation to play over and over and over. So let's now go to Zombie001. And for convenience sake, I'm actually going to right click and remove components on the animator. And now all I'm going to do is just drag and drop that zombie attack back onto our zombie. Now, if I go to the animator component, or rather the tab up here, you'll see zombie attack is the default. I've done the wrong one. That doesn't really matter. We can just have him attack over and over. Uh, but I mean, all I want to do here was just to show what the zombie uh, will do when we attach his true animation. There we go. So you can see him attacking there. Awesome. Perfect. So, um, what we're going to do next tutorial is we are going to basically get our zombie to walk. We're going to get him animating correctly. We're going to attach all four animations to him and we're going to be able to control what animations do what. So this is the beginning of creating some AI. And I do like creating AI from scratch and then building up because it gives a good sense of what you've really accomplished. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.